Oh, you're not going to introduce or anything. So I just need to start off then. The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Welcome to the last of the holiday party webinars. This uh, Bagget and Tagget is about making a very quick, simple gift bag and personalized gift tags. We'll be using the Artistic Edge Digital Cutter and the Iron-On Glitter Vinyl. The Artistic Edge Digital Cutter comes with the Simple Cut software included. Having the software included makes it easy to do all different types of embellishment from crystals, paper, vinyl, cutting fabric uh, for applique, and adds the ability for you to actually add the stitches to apply the applique. There are many places where you can get more information and projects and training for the edge cutter. If you link up on the Janome site, just type in Artistic Edge and that will in the, in the search box and that will bring you to lots of different places where you can find more information. There's a wonderful selection of YouTube videos on the Artistic USA YouTube channel. And in that list of videos, you'll find the Quick Start Guide for the Edge, and that will cover a lot of the things that we'll go over today. And there's also using graphic fonts with the Artistic Edge, and as we're going to create some snowflakes from a graphic font, this would also be a secondary place to get information on what we'll cover in today's project that Quick Start has written lessons that accompany the video. And you can download those by going to the Artistic Creative Products site. Now again, if you start on the Janome site and you um, type in the Artistic Edge, you'll, you'll find the links to a lot of these sites. There's a lot of information in a lot of different places. The Quick Start Guide PDF is right here and that accompanies the YouTube video. So for today, you'll need just uh, the, for the gift tag some scrap fabric, iron-on iron -on glitter, a fusible webbing, some heavyweight cutaway, and you'll need your edge cutter that includes the Simple Cut software. You'll also want to download this tag design. So this is available for you to download. Uh, if you're on the Janome website, type in webinars in the search box. That will bring up the page for Janome webinars, and right under at the top in the Holiday 2014 webinars, you'll see a, a link for the instructions. And if you right-click Save Link As, you can download the PDF file and do the same thing for the draw file, the tag draw. Right-click Save Link As, and then you'll have the design that we're going to use in today's lesson, as well as the written instructions. We're going to be using a graphic font, and graphic fonts are just a great way to get additional graphics to complete designs. These are vector graphics, they're free, and there's just literally thousands and thousands of them available. Well, today we're going to use Snowflakes. My favorite site for getting graphic fonts is dafont.com. So if you navigate on your computer to DaFont, DaFont.com, um, over in this section over here, Dingbats and Holiday, this is where all of the graphic fonts are housed. I know the one that we want to use for today's lesson. It's called LP Snowflake. So if you type that into the search box at the right and select Search, it'll bring you right to the LP Snowflake page. You can just click on that font and if you forget how to install fonts on your PC, always on the front page of their website is the instructions for downloading fonts, whether you're on Mac, Windows XP, Windows 7, 8, or Vista. If Vista and up, it is so simple, and we'll walk through the steps. It's just right-click and install. So if you've navigated to the LP Snowflake page on the dafont.com website, the first thing you'll see is a character map which shows you all of the different graphics that you get and the letter associated with that particular graphic. Select the download icon, hit the tab there, and you'll get your pop-up download box. 
select to save the file and OK. Now you can see from the character map that we're going to be using a capital letter M and a capital letter O. And we just have to remember that when we get in the software. You want to install these before you open your software. The download will be in a zipped file. You'll need to open that zipped file and just double click to open it. Select the TTF or the True Type Font file and just drag it onto your desktop. One of the questions I get most often is uh, after the font is installed, you'll still have this True Type Font file sitting on your desktop. You don't need to have it sitting there. I actually start a font file and I keep all of my fonts in a backup file on a hard drive, on a separate hard drive. And so if I ever reform my mat, reformat my computer or get a new computer, I can reinstall all these fonts that I've taken the time to download. All you'll need to do once you move that TrueType font to your desktop is to right click it and the context menu will pop up and you can select install. That's it. That's how easy it is. If we open up our software, open up your Simple Cut software, now that that font is installed, we'll first work through the GIF tag. And you've downloaded the tag draw file. Let's open that by selecting File, Open, navigate to where you saved it. I kept mine on the desktop and select Open. This is going to just provide a, a backdrop so we can get the lettering the perfect size to fit on our finished project. I would also uh, like to print out a pattern and I can do that directly from the software by going to File and Print. Whenever you see something with the three dots afterwards like the Print, File, Print, that means it's going to open up another dialog box so you're not actually just instantly printing. The three dots mean you'll get another box here that will pop up. And this isn't going to help me. It's on two pages. I've got a hoop outline and information that I don't need. I just need the pattern so I can cut out a gift tag. Come over to the Design Only tab, select that, and now selecting OK, it'll send it to the printer of your choice. So now you'll have a pattern that we can use to cut out the gift tag. Let's get the lettering by selecting the text icon click and type the text of your choice. I'm going to use a combination of upper and lower case. If you don't like the font you've selected, use the font drop down and find a font on your computer that's nice and thick that would make a great cutout for the vinyl. Once your text is typed and your font is selected, select the rectangle selection icon. Hover your cursor in a corner and we can drag and resize the lettering. Get it stretching, skewing, resizing, get it exactly the way you would like to see it on the tag. And as soon as that is ready, make sure that it has a dark color for the outline. You can see that it has defaulted to running stitch, which is great. That will give us our outline that's needed for the cutter. Select a dark color by clicking in the upper left corner of one of the color chips in the palette. Now we don't want the tag to be cut, so select the tag and let's select none. That way the outline won't show up in the cutter dialog. To cut it, select File, Export to Crystal's Cutter, and the dialog box appears. And the one thing we forgot to do was to reverse the lettering. This is a great place to check that. I'm going to select the lettering, come up, and Mirror X. Whenever you're using an iron-on product, you'll usually need to reverse the lettering and it gets flipped upside down and your resulting lettering will be right side up. So let's now go to File, Export, Crystals to Cutter, and I can see my lettering has been reversed and I like to cut a frame whenever I'm cutting out any of the vinyl that comes on a, um, a plastic sheet that I'm going to be 
cutting that out and then using it kind of as a, it'll hold my, it's a template material and it'll hold my design in place so that all the pieces of the lettering will be exactly in the right place. You'll see in the weeding process, cutting a frame helps tremendously. And we can go ahead and I'll talk about the trace and cut in a minute, but this design is now ready to go to the printer, our cutter. Let's grab a new blank workspace, and I can get that by going to New, selecting a color, Next, New Graphic, and Finish. And that's going to give me my new blank workspace. And what I'd like to do now is create some snowflakes to place on the gift bag using the graphic font. Select the Edit Text icon and click in an empty area of the workspace. Select the font by using the drop-down menu, and I'm going to just type the letter P, and then I'm going to scroll down. Remember that that was LP Snowflakes, and so scroll down until you see LP Snowflake, and then I click in the workspace again. I don't want to see blue up here on the font name, otherwise when I type a letter, I'll change my font. So I have a blinking cursor, and I'm ready to type a capital M. That's going to give me my first snowflake. Select the Selection tool, and I'm going to zoom out a little bit and resize by hovering my cursor in the corner and just dragging to resize. I can also use my Width and Height dialog, and I'd like this to maybe be about 3 inches and enter. And so I have one snowflake at about 3 inches. Let's get another snowflake. Hit the text icon. Click over in another area of the workspace. Our font is selected, and now type a capital O. And that gives us our second snowflake, the rectangle select, and resize. Or if you wanted to just type in, maybe you want this three and a half inches, and enter. And now I have my two snowflakes. Instead of having white thread, I'm going to select a dark color so I can see it much more easily in the cutter dialog. And I have my two snowflakes. And you want to double check that the size is appropriate for the vinyl that you have and for your mat. And I have two three inch snowflakes so I should have you know a little over a six or seven inch cutting area. Let's go to File, Export Crystals to Cutter. And I can see here that I'm a little over 7 inches. That looks good. And I am going to leave the option for cutting a frame. And we'll switch back over to the PowerPoint. And I'll show you as you're weeding this out and getting these ready to apply, much easier to do if you cut a frame around them. And let's jump over into the, into the PowerPoint. And so the first thing that I did, if I'm going back to cutting either the snowflakes or the lettering, I'm going to move my blade into the lower or upper corner, whichever area um, you're not going to be using, and run a test cut. So position your blade and select test. And it's going to cut a series of nine small circles. And this is, I've cut, I've used this vinyl twice. So again, when I put this on, I ran a second test cut. I always run a test. Once that's completed, you want to double check if you're doing lettering that your design has been mirrored and put that check mark in cut frame. You'll want to, uh, once the cut frame is selected, you want to take a look at the pink circle and where that's located on your design. So if I'm looking at my printer, I want to move the printer blade right to this lower left hand corner. And then when I select Trace, my blade will move around and I can see exactly where this is going to cut. As soon as I've done that, I can select Cut. And my design is going to be cut out. Then, because I cut a frame, I, I can grab tweezers or a little X-Acto or one of the weeding hooks and pull away this rectangle. That makes it much easier to weed out the rest of the design because you can see where you're going. This part will come free and now all you'll need to do is remove the centers from any of your lettering. To create the gift tag, just grab some scrap fabric, 
fusible webbing and apply it to the back of your scraps. Take two scraps, remove the paper backing if that's um, affixed to your webbing, and you're going to create a sandwich with two pieces of fabric with a fusible webbing on the back. Insert in the middle a piece of heavyweight cutaway, and this is going to make a nice, um, thick, robust tag. Go ahead, once you've got that fused together into a sandwich, lay that pattern piece that we printed right on top and cut out your tag. Go to your machine, and I like to use a little bit wider uh, zigzag that's not very dense. So I'd rather go around the design twice if you want heavier coverage than to start out with a really super dense zigzag. This is a more modern style of, um, of finishing. I used about a 4 millimeter width and a 0.8 millimeter stitch length. You can cut a hole in the area indicated in the pattern using an X-Acto knife, even a nail. Uh, I happen to have an eyelet cutter, which is really um, a handy thing to have. If you've cut out, and again, making that frame makes it much easier to cut out the lettering, and you can see we're flipping it upside down, position that where you want it on your gift tag and place that in the heat press. Close the press till it beeps, lift up and remove the plastic and your gift tag will be ready. I, um, I took the option of inserting a grommet. These grommets are very inexpensive and uh, really create a nice finished look to the gift tag. And I was able to make three of these gift tags in within a half an hour from start to finish. Uh, once you get going, make them all at once, and they're very quick and easy. For the gift bag, I cut out the snowflakes, again, using the frame, and that makes it much easier to weed snowflakes. It could be much more complicated, and it'll make it easier to save your vinyl. You'll have um, uniform pieces that are much easier to use in your next project. And there wasn't any need to mirror these snowflakes because they really are symmetrical. So to create the gift bag, this was kind of a fun trick. I love the, the utility foot, the, um, the M foot. And this is usually used for overcasting, which we'll do next. But you can also make an incredible rolled hem with it. Put the M foot on and feed your fabric so it just comes up against the edge here. You'll see a little bit of fabric feeding up against the guide. If you look here, you'll see that that fabric then rolls over and if you use um, a zigzag right, so the zigzag is moved all the way to the right, you want to stitch with the 3.5 and the length of 0.65 millimeters. And if you use that zigzag R stitch, you will have a perfect rolled hem. Really quick and easy. Leave this same foot on now, switch to stitch number 13, and you can do your overcasting. So we've put the rolled hem along the top of the bag and then use stitch number 13 to close up the sides and the bottom of the bag. Just use the default settings there. Flatten the bottom of the bag, grab your scissors and cut off an inch or so and that will let you create a flat bottom for the bag for being able to stand um, gifts up. So if you're using, you can make any size bag you want. I just used a fat quarter. You can fold it lengthwise, widthwise, uh, depending on the size of your gift. This is great for bottles. And um, this will create a flat bottom. Now you just want to finish that up with that same overcasting stitch. I uh, left, uh, you can use the same foot or you can switch over to the stitch in the ditch foot and affix a ribbon to the bag. So kind of fold the bag out, see where you'd want to apply the ribbon, fold it in half, and then stitch it into a side seam. And that is really it. Now you can apply your snowflakes. I applied my snowflakes after I finished the bag. You could apply them before, but I wanted to make sure that I put them in the right place and that I didn't get them too low or too high on my fabric. So I waited, completed the bag, folded the bag in half, and then put my glitter snowflakes onto my gift bag. And um, I don't know if we have any questions, but that completes today's webcast. Thanks for joining us. 
All right, Amanda, we have a great question here. Is the heat press a Janome product? If not, where okay. can you buy it? Yes, it's an artistic product, and that should be out at our dealers now. Um, the artistic, oh, the artistic heat press, I'm looking at the cutter. The uh, heat press is a artistic product, and most all dealers, Janome dealers, will carry that um, artistic heat press. You'll see the artistic logo right here on it. This is really a fabulous thing to have. It makes all the difference in working with vinyl and especially if you're working with crystals. I started working with an iron and irons have holes in the bottom which means that some of your crystals don't get heat and if you've wondered why you're working with um, with glitz, with rhinestones and crystals, and some of them fall off your projects, really that gets solved by using a heat press. I don't know if you have anything to add, Kathy? No, I think we're good. If there aren't any more questions, and that should do it for today's webcast.